What's poppin' T-subs and T-squad? So listen, I am just burnt out, all right? I have a lot of stuff going on, um, and then YouTube and all of that, and it just, it's, it's a lot, y'all, all right? And that's why y'all didn't get a laugh last night. For the people that was looking forward to the laugh, I just ain't feel like doing it. Okay, I'm just going to be real. I didn't feel like doing it. I didn't have no energy and I just couldn't make myself get up to do it. I love y'all, but I couldn't make myself get up to do it. It's, it's a lot. Like I still haven't even watched um, Life at the Lockup. I might as well go on ahead and do that while I'm still here because I got to leave out later on today and be gone for hours and hours and hours at a time. Um, hopefully I'll make it back home in time to at least catch um, the Potomac. Girl, I don't know. We'll see. But um, th th I mean to burden y'all with all of my stress and my issues and what I got going on. Because um, I know y'all don't care. Shit, if it was me, I wouldn't care either, bitch. Y'all just here for the reviews. So since I got me a little bit of rest and I feel a lot less burnt out than I did yesterday. I could give y'all Love and Marriage Huntsville, season three, episode 15, Wrecking Ball Wanda. This episode, it was all right. Um, the end wrangled my nerve, but it wasn't bad. So Maurice and Kimmy go to look at the 47 acres. So Maurice says that he plans on building a spec house on the property, but not a personal home for he and Kimmy. And again, once again, that's something that he neglected to tell her. Um, and he says that this is going to help Kimmy on her real estate thing that she's trying to do, I assume. But um, she's saying that you're saying that this is something that's going to help me. But you're making all the decisions. You brought me here to say, well, this is what I'm doing. 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 But you know what I'm saying? I want you to do it and this could help you on your real estate career i'm gonna be real with you hold on y'all hold on hold on my bad i was texting my bro um here's another thing though that i really want to talk about maurice i really want you to focus less on helping out kimmy's career and i want you to focus more on getting yours up off the ground and it's no shade but again, every time we come to your office, we see you in an empty damn office. You understand me? And I just feel like even even if it's due out the work, when we see other people who have jobs, especially when it's dealing with the public, we see motherfuckers in there. Not just you and your sister. Not just the people that you invite to come up. No shade, Maurice. I'm not here to count your pockets. I ain't got no issues with you. All I'm saying is it would just be nice to see you have some other type of people there. That's at and I'm not saying that you don't have that because I'm more than sure you do. I, I just don't understand why we never get to witness that. That's all. Um, but yeah. Worry less about Kimmy's shit and worry more about your own. I don't think Kimmy really needs your help to get further in life. You know what I'm saying? You do that with Monster. I don't necessarily think Kimmy needs your guidance when it comes to that. I think Kimmy pretty much can handle that on her own. So then he asks her if he could, if she could pick up a drop off Monster more. Again, why is this little boy in your house? Because it seems to me that Everything that you said that you was going to take care of so that it didn't really have to so much involve Kimmy. She's now like it's like slowly you're starting to creep up on her. The things that you already wanted her to do, which was basically be there to take care of monster so that he could be able to say, I had my child in my house for a couple of years. You know, that's that's what it gives to me. No shade, but that's what it gives to me. And Kimmy use a special kind of food because I wouldn't have done it. That little boy got a mama. If that's the case, he need to go get his ass back to Michigan with his mama. Ain't they from Michigan, Detroit, Chicago? Girl, I don't know. He need to get his last there if that's the case. That, that would have been my thing. Because this ain't what we agreed upon. And what's the purpose of picking him up to rearrange his whole life for, for me to be the one doing every damn thing? That's not fair. As if you so damn busy, because again, we never get to see that. 
Anyway, Martel goes over his mama Marlene house to go and help with the damn cheering. He's sitting up here talking about something. He don't believe in men doing hair. That's a woman's job. Bitch, it's your job. You lost your woman by being one. How about that? Bitch ass nigga. Anyway, um, because he pissed me off this episode. So he talks about how Maurice wants him to go to a therapist about possible depression. And he nor Marlene doesn't think it's depression. It's not depression. It's not depression. Maurice ain't depressed. Your fuck ass for damn sure ain't depressed. And ain't nothing depressed about Marceau ass. Like y'all wasted. Dr. Francis is time and he's a much better man than I'll ever be, especially coming to sit up, uh, sit up amongst Martell face. I would never talk to Martell again if I was Dr. Francis and I'm just going to be real. But whatever, I guess when money talk from the from, from money talk BS walk, I wouldn't do it. I don't think Dr. Francis is that pressed for money. I, I just wouldn't have did it. But that's just me. Marlene says that she used to feel Melody was going to kill Martel because she had him doing so much in the past while she would just lay around and call his name all the time. I don't buy that because he doesn't even have a builder's license. So, I mean, even if she was to sit down on her ass all day, I feel like she got the right to do that because without her, he wouldn't have nothing. If I was to believe that Melody was just laying around, not doing shit, but ordering Martell around, if I chose to believe that, I don't really fool with Melody like that because I see her for her works and I know she just as she's full as just as much shit as Martell is. But what I'm not going to do is sit up here and try to place all of this blame on Melody and try to make it seem as if she's the causing or the reason or the start of all of this because she's not. Merlene's. Marlene, I was fooling with you last season because you was not allowing Martel to escape his fuck shit. I feel like this season he probably talked to you or probably threatened to not pay some of your bills or something around there. Because now it's like you done did a whole 180 and then I, whatever. So Martel brings the kids knowing um, the song about him and she tells him that she, you know what I'm saying, said that it was about the daddy. And then, of course, he got upset. Martel, this is the thing. You have a child that's old enough to already know that that song is about you. When the other kids get old enough, they're going to rewatch the playback from season one to however many seasons this shit lasts. And they're going to see the breakdown of how you did day damn mama. So I, I, I just you keep trying to protect them from shit that, that, that is inevitable. You can't protect them from this. You can't. You decided to bring this bullshit to national TV. You can't protect them from this. Sit in your shit, Martel. Sit in it. Because when those kids get older, it's not going to take what Melody done said or, or Vanessa done said. They got the proof in the pudding. Right here, bitch. So Maurice and Martel finally meet Dr. Francis Child. So when they call Marceau to see if he was still coming, he says he's not into that, that he respects what he does. But Dr. Francis is more suited to talk to people like Tisha and Letitia and other women because he could connect with other women. And see, that's the reason why if I was Dr. Francis, I wouldn't even fuck with Martel because that's basically what Martel took him as. See, y'all thought that because he was a man, he was just going to negate everything he went to school for and be on y'all side as a man. Why would he do that? That's not his job as a therapist. It's not the therapist's job to call to you and tell you what you want to hear. The therapist's job is to sit down, listen to what it is that you got going on, but also po point out your shortcomings. That's the purpose of therapy. Not to talk about what everybody else needs to do, but talk about you and your life and the things that you need to change or the people that you need to change or the places that you need to change or whatever the case may be. Like I don't know why y'all felt like because he was a man. He was just going to negate everything he was taught in school and be solely on y'all side as a man. You know, kind of like why Maurice decided to invite him down to that empty ass um, building that I don't bit more believe nobody run around there getting their credit fixed fuckers won't never see no holes around there. But that's a whole nother reason why I felt like you brought him there to try. So it don't seem like therapy. 
But he still came in there and told y'all, bitch, ain't none of y'all motherfuckers got no damn depression. Y'all just working yourselves too hard. And Martel, you damn sure ain't depressed about nothing. You just a fuck nigga that can't accept the fact that you and you alone single handedly ruined your family. Has nothing to do with none of y'all being depressed. I, I'm not dealing with that. Moving on. So it's the destiny race. So Tiffany thanks the group for supporting everybody down to their anniversary, but brings up the fact that every time they're all together, Bitlam erupts. So Destiny call, calls out Martel. Destiny says it's the Martel show because it's his pain. He brings it up and then he lashes out and he bees very passive aggressive and he knows how to push her buttons. Mama Marlene put jumps in and says that, um, it's not her husband. It's between her. It's between he and Melody and she should stay out of it. Martel says that he's glad that his mom stepped in because he didn't want to raise his voice at Destiny. Now, I got a couple of things that I want to say about that. First and foremost, I absolutely agree with Destiny a thousand ten percent. It is the Martel show. It is. It's definitely the Martel show and has been. But I'm going to be clear with you, Destiny. Let's not sit here and make Melody out to be some type of victim because she's not. It's also the, it's, listen, it's the male and tail show. Male and tail both are passive aggressive when it comes to each other. Male and tail both press each other's buttons. Male and tail both know how to press one another's buttons. It's not all Martel. That's the thing that's pissing me off as well. It's not all Martel. Does Martel have his shortcomings? Absolutely. We call him out every single season. He gets dogged out and talked about more than anybody. But let's not sit here and act like Melody ain't playing the same childish damn games. And let's not sit here and act like Melody ain't also using them kids to her game because she is as well. Like I said, I see Melody for who the fuck she is. Melody is not no innocent victim out of all of this. Now, I'm not saying she deserved to be getting cheated on. But what I am saying is, bitch, how you get them is how you lose them. Now, I don't give a fuck what none of y'all got to say about that. Ain't nobody lied on her. She came up here out of her own mouth talking about something, how she dated her Star Wars man and didn't find it a problem. So, girl, please. But, Merlene, it, you, you went to Destiny and said it was between them, so why the fuck are you in it? Because it has nothing to do with you. You walked away. You won't know, won't nowhere near around there. Then when somebody calls out Martel for his foolishness, now you want to come back and try to take up for your son. Nah, mama, don't take up for your son. Don't take up for your son. That's the problem now. That right there is what the problem is. That's why he doesn't find where he did an issue. And why people that's calling him out, he has an issue with. Mama, don't do that. And then another thing. This is why I call you bitch ass Martel, because instead of you defusing the situation with Destiny, because she is your friend, instead of you defusing the situation with Destiny, where, when your mama come button her nose in where it didn't belong, you want to sit up and hoo -hoo, hoo, pussy footing around, you know, all, all, just, 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 just bitch a fat shit. Bitch a fat shit. You so bitch made. That shit bitches do. Sissies go up for negativity when it comes up amongst women like that because a real man would have not have had his mama arguing with one of his homegirls. It, it wouldn't have happened. My brother wouldn't allow none of his homegirls to argue with our mama. It wouldn't have happened. Child, I can't. I can't. So then Vanessa and Marlene talk and then a fish named Wanda comes around there disturbing these people peace. I don't know why. Um, so then Vanessa brings up what um, Wanda said, a fish called Wanda said about her grandchildren down to the social media or whatever. And she shouldn't be surprised that Melody didn't want to take no type of advice from her because everything that she said about her thus far been negative. And I was on Vanessa's side with that. Everything that you have said about her and her kids have been negative, Wanda. So the nerve of you to sit up and want to disrespect somebody and tear somebody down and bring up their children, but then want to come back and try to give pause of wisdom. It don't work that way. If you're going to be a bitch in the beginning, I'm going to need for you to ride that hoe out and be a bitch to these people down to the end. If, if that's what you're going to do, fish. If not, 
child. So Wanda asked her, didn't she have a husband and a boyfriend? So why are you throwing up what I've done in my face? That's something that I done, that I put out about myself. And true enough, Wanda, you did. And I'm going to tell you something else. <laughs> I do remember last season where they was talking about how she didn't have much of a relationship with the other sister because their people didn't necessarily want Melody around like that because of the way the Melody was conceived. So Vanessa, Wanda did have a point. Do not throw stones at my glass house because both of us did the exact same thing. The only difference is you had a fucking baby. I don't know. I just feel like none of this would have never had to happen had Wanda never put... First of all, Wanda shouldn't even had nothing to do with whatever the hell Melody and Letitia and Marceau and Martel had going on. None of the other parents felt, felt it prudent to have their business or their nose in it. Anyway... So Letitia and Melody come over to defuse the situation as best as they could. So then Letitia says that Vanessa has also has also said things over social media, calling it cyberbullying. Letitia, don't do that. I can look at Vanessa and tell that that woman ain't bit more cyberbully none of y'all hoes. I think she went up there uh, getting your mama together is what she did. I, I, I don't see Vanessa being a cyberbully. Y'all stop throwing that shit around. It wasn't cyberbullying. Y'all got into it over social media. That's not cyberbullying. Like y'all are using these trigger words and these buzzwords to try to make it a whole lot more worse than what it actually is. Stop that shit, Letitia. You not that damn slow. Or are you? I don't know. Anyway, um... So then they get to arguing with each other, trying to calm down the situation. And then Letitia grabbed uh, Vanessa's wrist or something like that, girl. I don't know. And then, you know, Vanessa said, girl, don't be grabbing me like that. Now, see, that's what I'm saying. Vanessa, listen, and I know people going to go up for it. Bitch, I'm not because you too old. You way too old. You a mother and a grandmother. You way too old. You know damn well Letitia wasn't about to do nothing to your ass for you to have to take off on her like that. You could have just snatched your hand away and just let it be or walked away. I mean, y'all trying to sit up there and act like y'all about it, but ain't none of y'all about it like that. Because if y'all was, Letitia would have been for Melody and Melody and vice versa season one. I mean, let's just be clear. Wanda, you would have been to a Melody season two. Let's be clear. I... I Anyway, so why? Uh, I'm moving on from that. Like, I ain't even about to get on the ghetto comment because y'all not understanding what the ghetto thing mean. And I'm gonna be real, Wanda, you are ghetto fat and projetta fat as fuck. Calling it ghetto. Ghetto girl. Talk about some damn ghetto. She calling me ghetto. Just by the fact of you pronouncing it like that makes you a hood rat ass. But we know where you moving on. <laughs> so Vanessa and Wanda come to some type of understanding. I did. I guess if that's what they want to call it. And then Wanda does too much again, talking about that this is how she is, and I'm not gonna change for nobody, which is fine. Which is fine. She's grown enough to know who she is and what she wants to be. That's fine. But don't nobody got to like it. And ain't nobody got to put up with it. And if you do that to anybody and they decide that they want to get your ass together for it, then that's something that you just got to deal with. That comes with the territory. Since you don't feel like you need to change, then you can't get mad at how people receive you. So then Letitia tries to, you know, tell her, look, Ma, you wrong. You doing way too much. All this shit that you giving, it is not cute. And it's not. It ain't cute at all, Miss Wanda. This that you doing, it's not cute. It ain't even believable. It ain't even believable. It, it, it's not. And then you keep referencing Kimmy and I don't know why. Kimmy did absolutely nothing to you. Kimmy did absolutely nothing to Letitia. Keep talking about what you going to do. You not going to do a goddamn thing, Miss Wanda. Sit down. Anyway, y'all, that's it. That's all I got. I ain't got no more to give y'all. I'm into this shit before my nerves get wrangled up. I'm already in my damn feelings lightweight. Like, I, I, just, I, I, I ain't got no time for no more of the stupidity, the mayhem, the calamity, and the mess by people that's supposed to be grown-ass women. Like, it... 
I'm gone. Bye.